everyone, it's Lorelai. In this video, I wanted to go over how I made this very simple party system. So far, it just works with one character. Later on, I'm going to make sure that it works with the rest of the party members. In this game, there will be four party members all together, including uh, the main character, including Deirdre. And the player, you, will be able to switch between whoever you want to control uh, whenever you want inside the game depending on your preferred play style or if you just want to have more precise control over the abilities that they're using. But I've got it working for one, and actually this is uh, the second time I've recorded this because when I was recording this the first time, I came across a bug um, in, in my logic that I squashed, I fixed. Uh, so this, this video should be a lot better because I I'll go ahead and show you how it works in the game. I do want to point out that the reason they are so far apart is because I put in an action for the party member to teleport to the main character when they're too far away, about 500 pixels, I think I set it at. And that was just me testing that. So let's see how that works. Oop, let's bring this over. And it worked. Okay, so the second character teleported right on top and I can move around and my party member is following me. Very cool. It's similar to RPG Maker with the party following system, um, but I don't think the remaining party members will be following in a line. I think they might be grouped up. Uh, we'll see how that ends up looking <laughs> when I get to that point. But right now, as you can see, there's a circle underneath my main character, the person that you are controlling. The circle is just a placeholder for now. And if I press two, that switches on over to, to the second party member. Very cool, now you're controlling him and Deirdre is following him around, yay. I also set it up so that when you're going down the ladder, that party member just kind of disappears. They are not on the ladder with you. I made that decision because I thought once you have all of your party members, it's gonna be really cluttered and it's not gonna look good when you're on the ladder. So they're just invisible until you get off that ladder. And that's going to work both ways, hopefully. <laughs> yep, okay. So let's see how I did this. If I go into objects, you'll see that I now have uh, four objects underneath party. Eventually it will be eight objects, probably more. I have Deirdre playable. So this is Deirdre when you control her. And you can see that based off of this little icon on the right of her name. And then Nisha Playable is actually just a copy and paste of Deirdre, except a different animation, a different graphic there. So unfortunately, whenever I make an edit on this character, I'm gonna have to do the same thing on this character, unless there's a way to consolidate all of the actions into one central location, but I haven't figured that out yet. So right now I'm just gonna have to copy and paste all of my edits over for each character. I then have a second object of each playable character as a follower character. So these followers are going to have totally different logic than, than if they were being played. For example, right now I'm working on the AI for the second party member, his name is Nisha, uh, for Nisha's attack. Um, if Deirdre is locked onto someone, he will also attack. But we're not going to go over that this episode because I am still working on this. <laughs> so we're just going to focus on Deirdre follower uh, because she has just the basic logic that we need for the system. So first of all, we have our main action, which is just follow main. And that's just going to follow whoever the main character is. The main character in this case is going to be the locked object, the, uh, the party member, the followers locked object, and we'll get into that. I also have a switch to turn free movement off just because of this disappear when on main ladder. Uh, that's just there just because. <laughs> Instead of making a whole new action, I just, I just put it here. Which by the way, in a previous episode, what I was doing was I was applying, I think it's actually still here, I haven't fixed it yet. Uh, yeah, it is still here. So uh, before I said ignore wall detection, ignore tiles wall detection under template move settings, what you could do instead of that is just go to switch object self and there's a built in switch called free movement and you can just turn that to on and that will make them set to through. So they'll be able to go through um, 
reptiles and all of that. Although also thinking about it, <laughs> technically this animation doesn't have any collision on it. Let me let me go see. Um, so no. So well, okay. Apparently I do have collision. Apparently I do have collision. I probably don't need collision. No, I need collision. I need collision because that's for attacks and some other things. I don't need wall detection. Wall detection is what's going to stop the character from going through tiles. So theoretically, she should be able to do that. But <laughs> just in case, I've turned free movement on, or in this case, uh, this template move settings to on. Anyway, let's go back to <laughs> let's go back to the party member logic. Uh, so she's following the main character. She's following um, who the user is playing as. So I'm just going to call them. The main, the main character, the playable character. Right now, I have it just as main. So she's going to follow the main character until she discovers in a new field of vision. I've called follow field of vision. It's kind of like in her melee range, but a little bigger. Uh, so in her follow field of vision, if she discovers her main character lock or her locked object, um, then she will stop following. Easy mode. Then when she hasn't discovered, it's the same logic, but with hasn't, whoop, go away. <laughs> it's the same logic, but with hasn't, um, has not discovered, then she will go back to following. So it's a very basic loop um, at this point. It was very easy to do. Now let's talk about something that was a little more complicated. Um, the logic that determines who exactly is the main character and who Deirdre is actually following. Because I could set it to Deirdre just following Nisha. That would have been easy, right? Just follow Nisha all the time. Or if uh, Deirdre is the main character, then Nisha, you follow Deirdre all the time. But because there's going to be four party members and you can switch between them at will, uh, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> that wouldn't that wouldn't necessarily work, right? So I needed some other way to set the main character. And I did that based off of the same logic that I did for targeting the slime. If you remember, I used this locked object. Now I'm using something called main character lock, which is almost the same thing, except this one's going to be targeting party members or the player group while this locked is targeting uh, the enemy group. So let's see what is going on here. Let's go to Deirdre. There are three, well, two uh, things that I needed to add. I needed to add a switch and I needed to add a variable. The switch is for the playable characters, which I have called, which I've called current main. And this switch is on on by default for Deirdre. If I go to Nisha, Nisha's current main is off, okay? Because he's not the, the current main at the beginning of the game. That is Deirdre. So by default, current main for Deirdre is on. The other important one is a variable, but this variable is not an object variable. This is a global variable. So if we go into resources here under this variables tab, you'll see that I have current main character. And I have it listed here what each of these numbers will represent. So one, current main character, default value one, this is always Deirdre. If this variable changes to two, then I know that the main character is Nisha. If it's three, it's the third character, Belle. And then if it's four, it is Fiona. These are the four characters in my game. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so by default, it is one, again, for the same reasoning at the beginning of the game, Deirdre is the current main character. So let's go back to objects, uh, back to Deirdre. If we go to her common actions now, we have this one, generate lock if main, okay? This is looking to see if the current main character variable is one, which it is by default, right? Because uh, that's, that's her, right? If it's one, if she is the main character, and if the loop is off, and this is just a switch that I always add just to keep this from looping, otherwise it's gonna be doing this same common action again and again and again forever, um, whenever, sh whenever this is one. Uh, so I have this loop to turn off. Okay, so if that variable is one, then what we're going to do is we're going to generate a child object, main character lock, which we talked about before. So just generate as a child object. I have it set to adjust position uh, 50, 50 pixels from the Y just so it looks nice. So if I preview it, it, it looks nice here. 
And as you can see, I'm pretty sure that uh, it's constant. <laughs> it's constantly generating, as you can see, um, because this is just a preview and it doesn't have that that lock on. Anyway, um, so we're we're generating that character lock. So that's the same as the slime generating its locked um, objects. Then we have switching current main to on. This is going to be important later for the follower. So now it's objects switch, it's, it's self switch, current main is now on, and then I turn on the main lock loop so that this does not loop. So now we have the main character lock, which is this guy over here generated underneath her, and then we have current main switch is on. In addition to this, the current main character variable is also on, all okay? right? So let's go over, let's look at Nisha. Again, ignore all of this attack stuff. I'm still figuring this out. So Nisha, if we go to the common actions, we have a few things here. We've got lock on main, we've got become main, and we've got if main too far. So first, lock on main. How does this work? Well, if there is no locked target already, okay, so this is gonna keep it from looping. If there's no locked target, so this is off, uh, then lock on someone. <laughs> Who are they going to lock on? They are going to lock on anyone. This has no settings here. So normally I would have like lock objects within field of vision or on screen or there's no there's no settings here. So anywhere, literally anywhere. I think I think that's how that's going to work. Um, objects to lock someone in the player group. And this person in the player group is determined by who has this switch on. So if that character has a switch called current main, and if that is on, then they will lock onto that target. So that is why we have that switch is for uh, locking on to the main character. And then I'm pretty sure we just have change unconditionally. Yeah. So that's what's determining this follow main. We've got follow whoever's in the player group, but also prioritize whoever's locked. And that is pretty important. What else do we have here? We have, let's skip become main. We have if main too far. So that was that teleport that I mentioned before. So if the distance with uh, main character lock, in this case, I'm using the main character lock object because sometimes you can't say your current locked object in this panel, maybe in a future update. Uh, but right now, this object main character lock works just fine. <laughs> so if I'm too far away from main character lock, um, more than 500 dots, more than 500 pixels, then go ahead and set my XY coordinates to my locked object. In this case, I can use locked object, <laughs> my locked objects X coordinate and my locked objects Y coordinate. So that was that teleport that we saw at the beginning. And then I'll go ahead and quickly go over how they're disappearing on the ladder. It's not really that important, but basically if um, my locked object, in this case Deirdre, but whoever's locked, whoever is playable, if they're going down the ladder, if they're going up the hole, if they're going up and down, right? If they're doing any of the ladder actions, right, and I have or set here, then they will just go ahead and disappear. So transparency is set to 100% in 0.2 seconds, and I turned on free movement so that I didn't have to worry about all of that through stuff in, in, in the move template. Uh, and then they will reappear if they are not doing any of those things. If they're not doing any of those things and if the area detection is not seven. And the reason for this was because I'll show you, uh, during my testing, if I went down and then I went up, they would spawn right here, but but right here on the ladder. And if I worked like this, but like real quick, um, obviously it's working, so you can't see. <laughs> uh, they would get stuck in the ladder, and that was really stupid and annoying. So now they just now they just spawn when um, my area detection is not seven. And if you remember, Seven is this one, so it can't be seven. So delete filter effects from object and change unconditionally stop following. Um, this one is just set to stop. So they reappear and this goes just unconditionally to stop following, uh, which then goes into follow main again. And then I have that switch to turn off free movement on follow main. And the reason I put it on follow main was just in case they they reappear, but on a weird 
location and maybe there's some collision and I just wanted to avoid that happening. Um, so here there's they might still be um, with they might still be with free movement is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, but when they're moving, that turns off. I might end up moving that. It depends on on how that runs. But so far, it's fine. Okay, I think I'm going to end this devlog here. And then in the next devlog, I'll go over how we're switching the playable characters. So look forward to that. <laughs> and I'll talk to you later. Bye.